Right, my name's Alan Simmons. I work for NHS Careers. Um, we're part of uh, a new organisation called Health Education England. And what I'm here to do today in the next 15, 20 minutes or so is just talk to you a bit about career opportunities within the NHS. How many people here work for the NHS? Anybody here work for the NHS? Okay. Anybody know anybody who works for the NHS? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me run through a few things with you. Um, <coughs> One of the key messages we're trying to get across to anybody is that the NHS is much more than just doctors and nurses. We do need doctors and nurses, don't get me wrong, but we need so many other people as well. We are currently the fifth largest employer in the world. Yes, you heard that right, the fifth largest employer in the world according to the BBC website. We were eclipsed by um, McDonald's last year. Uh, we used to be the third largest employer in the world, but we are now the fifth. We are huge as an employer of people within the UK. Okay, how many people here watch programs like Casualty? Hands up, who watches Casualty? Okay, hands down. How many people watch One Born Every Minute? Yes, okay, I'm making a mental note here. How many people watched Munro when it was on? That was all about a neurosurgeon with uh, Jimmy Nesbitt. Okay, yeah, I watched that as well, that's good. Call the midwife. Oh, there's a few hands going up more than once here, I can see. Yeah, yeah, you watch a lot of TV, don't you? How about junior doctors? Anybody watch the junior doctors program? God, his hand goes up again. There's no prize for the number of times you put your hand up. How about house? Oh, not so many hands. Okay, one at the back, two at the back. Now, the key thing about all these programs is that the main characters that feature in all of them are doctors, nurses, and midwives. Occasionally, you'll see a paramedic. Occasionally, you'll see a porter. When was the last time you saw a radiographer, a physiotherapist, a biomedical scientist? So, it's not just doctors and nurses. Okay, are you ready for this? I'm gonna flash various career titles up in front of you, and you've gotta remember how many there are and where they appear on the screen. Ready, go. So, there are around about 350 different careers within the NHS. So I'm not testing you on how many there are actually on the screen. Around about 350 separate careers. So, if you were to draw a pie chart of all of the people who work in the NHS, and you added up the nurses, the midwives, the doctors, and the dentists, just right to throw that one in, left field dentists, that would make up around about 40%, 40% of the NHS workforce. You can see from this slide behind me, there are lots and lots of other opportunities. Who thinks that you have to go to university to work in the NHS? I'm looking very carefully here. No, okay. You're absolutely right. You do not have to go to university to work in the NHS. There's various ways you can enter a career in the NHS. Now, you can't get into all careers through every route. So, for example, if you want to be a nurse, you have to go to university and do a degree in nursing. There is no way around that. You have to do that. There are routes that, various routes you can take to get you to the level before you go into university. That might be an apprenticeship. That might be working in a healthcare support role. But there are some jobs you can go straight into through an apprenticeship after an FE college course, after a degree, after a postgraduate qualification. It depends on the career you want to go into. One of the things I've been doing in the last month or so, apart from preparing for today, is looking at apprenticeship vacancies within the NHS. Anybody here thinking possibly about an apprenticeship? Maybe, there's a few people putting their hands up, people scratching their noses and their hair. Here are some examples 
of apprenticeships I've found in the NHS over the last month. Now, if you just look at the sort of apprenticeship opportunities that are there, they are really quite varied. So we've got business admin, we've got stores apprentice, we've got an apprentice mechanic in Coventry, that's working with one of the ambulance service trusts. How many people have seen our ambulance up on the other stand? We've got an ambulance on another stand up there, up next to the City and Guild stand and the BBC up that way. Go and have a look. Um, so we employ mechanics, who'd have thought that? We employ people working in the States, carpenters, bricklayers, painters and decorators. Okay? We employ uh, staff coming into apprenticeships in things like pharmacy administration. Not training you to be a pharmacist, but you're working supporting the pharmacist as part of the team. Gardeners, health visiting clerk, and you'll also see some healthcare direct hands on patient care support roles there too. So quite varied. And this is just a snapshot. This is not an exhaustive list by any means. Okay, there's lots of you here today, and it's great to see so many people. But each of you will, who are thinking about a career will have different interests, skills, and abilities. And all I can really hope to do in the next slide or two is give you some examples of careers that might interest you based around some common themes. So let's say, for example, you are a quite a practical person. You enjoy practical skills. Here are some examples that you might want to consider. And yes, these are all in the NHS. Some of those you will recognize, some you may never have heard of before, and some you might think, well, actually, yeah, I quite like photography. I'd like to be a clinical photographer. We actually had some clinical photographers on our stand for the last two days up by the ambulance. And uh, they had some fascinating stuff on display that you could have a look at. Or you might decide you want to be a painter and decorator. Yeah, practically minded, good with your hands, like using those practical skills. Want to work with children, perhaps? A lot of young people want to work with children or they think they want to work with children. Here are some examples for you to have a look at. Now you can see from the left hand column here, there are some opportunities to come in through an apprenticeship or perhaps directly into a job. Again, some of these roles you may not have heard of. So for, for instance, if you're interested in midwifery, yes, you need to be interested in babies, but midwives spend very little time with babies. Most of their time is actually working with the mum-to-be. Perhaps you'd like to go into something where you're supporting a midwife, a maternity support worker. You could be working, perhaps actually get more contact with babies than a midwife, maybe. Or a newborn hearing screener. New ba uh, babies are now screened to test their hearing. Are there any major problems that can be identified at a very early age? And you can see the various roles here. I don't need to sort of go through these all in detail with you. Did you know that the NHS has a healthcare science workforce of 50,000 people? We have 50,000 scientists working in the NHS. And they're not all based in a laboratory. Some will work in a laboratory using microscopes and really technically advanced equipment. And they're looking at blood cells, they're looking at um, uh, all sorts of bodily fluids and skin tissue and things to help identify the cause of disease. But you could equally work in, in uh, healthcare science where you have a lot of patient contact, where you're actually measuring a patient's cardiovascular system or their I don't always do this, their brain activity, it's like a halo, isn't it, brain activity, or their gastrointestinal tract, their gullet, their intestine. You can go into those sorts of jobs, healthcare science jobs. Some of those jobs you can come into through an apprenticeship or directly into a job. Some you need to do a degree, 
some you can come into after a postgraduate level qualification. Most people have heard of uh, a physiotherapist and a radiographer. Did you know there's two types of radiography? Diagnostic. How many people here had an x-ray? Who's ever broken? Well, that's the majority. A lot of people here falling over in things. Um, that's one type of radiography. The other type of radiography is therapeutic radiography, where you're treating patients who have cancer or forms of cancer. And you're, it's a different type of radiography. It's different training, but it's another job. Operating department practitioner. We had an ODP on our other stand yesterday. And ODPs work in the operating theater, along with the surgeons, the anesthetists, the theater nurses, They'll work also with people like perfusionists. Anybody heard of a perfusionist? Anybody know what a perfusionist does? You know what they do. I won't ask you to tell us what they do. Basically, if any of us ever have to go and have open heart surgery, they unplumb your heart and they plug it into a machine that does the work of your heart while they're operating on it. And the person who looks after that machine is called a perfusionist. There's about 350, 400 of them in the country. Had you heard of that job before today? This lady had. You're not a perfusionist, are you? No. Um, <coughs> so there are all sorts of job opportunities, lots of careers within, within the health service. And I would encourage you, if you're thinking about a career, to explore what we have on offer. We've got a have-a-go area just the other side of the green screen. We've got our other stands with, with staff up by the ambulance and come and talk to us about any of the careers that I've talked to you about or others that you may be interested in. <coughs> so come and see us on our stand, either of our stands. We've got a, st a website which is specifically for young people at school called Step Into the NHS. If you sign up to that website, so if you visit the website, you can take part in a, uh, a career quiz to try and generate some career ideas for you. You can watch some video clips we put on there. If you decide you'd like to find out more, you can register with the Step Into the NHS website, and we will do three things. First of all, we'll send you an electronic welcome pack. Secondly, we'll give you access to other areas of the website, which cover things like work experience. And thirdly, we'll send you emails once a term, which are relevant to you in your year group as you progress through secondary education. And that's all free. And we do that through the Step Into the NHS program. Our main website is up there. It's got about 1,500 pages on there. Lots and lots of information about careers. For anybody who's into social media, we've got a Facebook channel there, um, specifically for, for young people. We've got a video uh, channel on YouTube with about 80 or 90 videos on there featuring different careers. So if you want to know what a different career involves, have a look at our YouTube channel. And you can follow us on Twitter. We've been tweeting from the website. Did you know? Here's a little fact for you. How many people here watch Dragon's Den? OK. How many people here have heard of Theo Pafitis? Theo was here on our Have A Go stand on Thursday. And he was trying cardiac uh, massage on a dummy we had there, on our Have A Go stand. And we took a picture and we tweeted it. And he tweeted it as well. So the magic of technology, it's just amazing. So Theo and all of his followers now know that he's been on our NHS career stand trying a bit of the old CPR. So if you want to follow us on Twitter, please do that. Anybody got any questions in the last few minutes? I've shocked them all into silence. Hello. What are the job prospects for young people if they do follow these career pathways? Sorry, I couldn't hear that. Is the microphone on? Speak, speak here. Really? With the cutbacks in the NHS, what are the job prospects for young people going in through these career pathways? Okay, okay. That's a good question. The, the NHS, as we said, has got a workforce of around about 1.2, 1.3 million, okay? I don't know what the turnover of staff is within the NHS, but let's say it was 10%. 10% of 1.3 million, I think, is about 130,000. Okay. Potentially, if we wanted to just keep running, we would need to be recruiting 130,000 a year. Okay. 
Now, obviously, there have been cutbacks in the NHS, and I would be lying to you if I said everything is hunky-dory, everything is fantastic, you know, really, really easy. It's not. But what I would say is, is, is this. The number of places that are offered on university courses to do things like nursing, physiotherapy, radiography, speech and language therapy, dietetics, orthoptics, and a few others, the NHS actually pays students to go and do those courses. We actually pay your tuition fees in full. We give you a means-tested bursary, and we give you a £1,000 grant each year. Now, the NHS wouldn't be investing so heavily in those courses if there weren't going to be opportunities at the end. They're not guaranteed opportunities. We can't sign you up and say, you've got to work for us. We can't do that. Um, but clearly, the NHS is investing our money as taxpayers into that funding, into that training. Um, I think to partly answer your question, I would, I would always encourage anybody who's thinking about working in delivering NHS healthcare to think about all of the different healthcare providers that are out there. So the NHS at the moment in England is delivered by around about 1,000 organisations in England. 1,000 organisations. Some of them are hospitals, NHS hospitals. Some of them are like the ambulance service trusts that we have around the country, 13 of those. But a lot of um, NHS healthcare is now delivered by charities and the independent healthcare sector. So you could actually be delivering NHS healthcare being employed by an organisation like MIND, which is a mental health charity, or be providing NHS healthcare being employed by a private hospital, like a Nuffield hospital. Because the NHS buys those services from those organisations to provide that NHS healthcare. As an NHS patient, it doesn't cost us anything, but in terms of accessing some of those types of treatment, we, it won't necessarily be the local NHS organisation. So there are opportunities there within those organisations as well as within the traditional NHS organisations. Does that sort of answer the question a bit? Yeah? I mean, do feel free to come back to me later on if you want to. Um, I'll be around on the stand later. Any other questions? We've got about two minutes, I think. Yeah. They're in stunned silence now. Can we go, please? Well, I hope you have a really good show. Thanks for coming along to this session. I hope you found it useful. And do come and visit our stand there or up the one with the ambulance.